الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض جاعل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاث ورباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى أحمده سبحانه وأشكره وأتوب إليه وأستغفره له الحمد ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وملء ما شاء من شيء بعد أهل الثناء والمجد لا مانع لما أعطى ولا معتئ لما منع ولا ينفع ذا الجد منه الجد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَالْضُحَى وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Allah says وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى Allah says وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ so Allah in many places, He takes an oath by time, by different units of time. By the dawn, by the daybreak, by the night, by the day, all these different forms of time. And Allah, He takes an oath by this creation of His. And time is something, as Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala said, Ya ibn Adam, innama anta ayyam. He said, Oh children of Adam, you are nothing but a counting of days, a number of days. Whenever a day of yours passes, a part of you also has passed, a part of you dies. That's why Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He reports from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, Ma min mayyitin yamut illa nadam. That there is no one that dies except that he dies in a state of regret. Whether he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, whether he was pious or if he is someone who lived a wretched life, there is no one on the face of this earth except that when they die they will be in a state of nidama, regret. So the people they asked, What will be his regret? What will be the regret of the mayyit, of the one who dies? The Messenger of Allah said, if he was a good man, if he was a pious person, and if his life was spent in a good way, then his regret is, is that he can't increase in his actions anymore. He can't do anything now. If he was someone that was praying, fasting, giving charity, as soon as he dies, all of these things, they come to an end, they stop. And this is his regret. As for the second person, if he's a bad person, if he was an evil person, if he was a sinful individual and he dies, then his regret will be that he was not able to make tawbah in time. He was not able to repent to Allah in the time that he had been given. And this gate of repentance, this gate of tawbah is very vast. There is no one on the face of this earth that will have this complaint on the day of judgment that tawbah was not made easy for us. There is no one that can say this. Tawbah has been made very easy and the, and the door, the gate of Tawbah is very vast and it's a gate that never closes. It's a gate that remains open throughout your life and it only closes at the time of your death. So the one who spent his life in a bad way, then this will be his regret. That this gate was there, this opportunity was there the whole time, 50, 60 years that he lived and he wasn't able to enter through this door. 
And even just saying Astaghfirullah with a sincere heart, perhaps Allah will forgive a person just for saying that. That's how easy it can be. So time, dear Muslims, is a unit that we are subjected to. It's something that we have to live with. And there is no one that can escape time. That's why after Allah swears by time, after He said, Wal Asr, He said, Inna al insana la fi khusr. Mankind will lose, will perish, because you can't win in this transaction, you can't win in this race. The race of time, there's always only one winner, and that is time. Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he was giving advice to some people. He said, Iyakum. He said, be careful and be warned of something that we say this week. This idea that people, they put things in the future. So in Arabic, they say sofa. Sofa is for something that will happen in the future. So this is a habit that we have. Someone, he is late for his zakah. So he says sofa, he says, I will do it. Someone, he hasn't prayed his salah for the day, he will say, I will do it later. Someone, he missed a fast of Ramadan, he says, I will make it up later. Everything gets put in the future. Everything gets put in a delayed time frame. Umar radiallahu anhu, he warned against this. He said, don't do this. Because you will leave so many things for the future. And then you will spend the rest of your time trying to catch this one day where you have the time, the ability, the energy to do everything. And he says that this day will not come, it will not arrive. So when something comes to your mind, it's important that you try to execute this thing as soon as you can. If someone needs to make toba, if someone needs to pray, if someone needs to give something in charity, if someone needs to do something that's a good action, that will gain him reward, then this is not something to be delayed. This is something that you need to rush towards. This is something that you need to be quick towards. Because time does not wait for anyone. How many people, they planned and they planned and they planned, but they weren't able to execute any of these things. Because the life that they had, the time that they had been given, it caught up to them. Just on Monday morning in Manchester, in my area, at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning, sorry, 7 a.m. there was a car accident with four young boys, 25, 26 year olds. One of them died at the scene of the accident. The other two were in a coma of which I think one has passed away as well now. And the fourth one, he's okay. So four young boys driving, 7 a.m. Sunday morning. Allah Azza wa Jal knows best the state that they were in. And death caught to them. And from what people are saying, because sadly, very, very sadly, our Muslims, when someone dies or someone passes away, the first thing they do is they get their phone and they start to share the messages. And when they share the messages, they share pictures. And a picture paints a big story. You see a picture of someone, it paints a story about this person's character, how he was. And the Muslims, they don't think. They will share photos and send photos which paint a bad image of the person that died. Because people realize what this person was like, what his life was like, what he was up to. So these brothers, Allah knows best what happened in their last moments. But from what it seems, is they died in a very bad state. They died in a very bad state. Them, nor anyone else, could have predicted that just around this corner, my time will come to an end. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ that on Yom Al Qiyamah it will be said to the people, Kam Labithum, how long did you spend? How long did you remain? Fil Ardi Adada Sinin. How many years did you live in this world? 
And this question that Allah will ask is very similar to a question that we have to answer all the time. How old are you? The time that we live in, the place that we live in, we have an identity, you have a name, you have a surname, you have an address, you have a national insurance number, you have a date of birth. Some of these things are so important that if you fail to produce this information, you will not be identified as yourself. If you want to go to the bank and they ask you for your date of birth and you say, I don't know, they will not let you access your own money that you earned with your own hands. Likewise, if you call someone, a company, a government company or anyone else, and they ask you for your date of birth and you get this wrong, they will not allow you to access that information even though it's you. This is the world that we live in. So a date of birth is something everyone knows. Everyone knows their date of birth. In fact, we've become indulged in the celebration of birthdays to the point where people spend thousands of pounds on their birthday. So not only do we know our date of birth, we know the exact years, months, days, we even count down till our birth date. So you would think that when Allah asks you how long you spent in this world or how long that you lived your age, you would think it's a very easy thing to answer, but no. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, nothing is easy. On the day of resurrection, nothing will be easy. The people, they will be in a state of shock that they heard about these things. They thought it was a myth. They thought it was stories and tales. But then one day they will be standing on that day. And they will not be in a normal functioning state. As Allah said, the people, they will be like they are drunk. But really, they will not be drunk. It's just that the torment and the punishment of Allah will be so severe that they will be behaving like they are intoxicated. This day, the length of which is 50,000 years, the heat of which is something you can't imagine. On this day, Allah will say, How long did you spend in this world? How long was your life? How many years did I give you to live? And the people, they will answer differently. Some of them will say, They will say, Oh Allah, we lived for one day. Others will say, O Ba'da Yawmin, O Allah, we lived for part of the day. Some of them will say, we lived for 10 days. And some of them will even say, Illa sa'atan min nahar. We lived for not more than an hour from the evening. So there will be a range of answers, 10 days, one day, part of the day, a few days, and some of them will even say that we only lived for one hour. One hour. A grown man, white hair on his head, will be saying to Allah that I lived for only an hour. Are they lying? Not really. They just don't know. On that day, they won't know. They won't have the ability to calculate their life anymore. That's why Allah says, فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِينَ Straight away Allah says, فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِينَ Allah says, don't ask these guys, don't ask these people, these human beings, weak, forgetful. Ask the one who took account of everything. Let's ask the angels who were recorded, who were recording everything that you did. We'll ask them and they will produce a document, they will produce a record in which your life will be found. And then based on this record, Allah will say, no, my friend, you did not spend an hour or a day or part of the day. You lived for 75, 85, 95 years. And the, in these years, this is all the good that you did. And this is all the bad that you did. And some of the ulama, they say that the reason the people will be in such a delusional state and the reason they'll be in denial of their life it's because when they are presented with their book of good deeds and when they are presented with their actions and they see that they don't really have many good actions 
So then they will think, maybe we were from those people that had a short life. We didn't get enough time to gather good actions. So this is how they will be thinking at that time. So the people, they live for how long now? As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that my ummah will live between 60 and 70 years and few of them will exceed 70. And how true was he, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How right was he? But very few people, they exceed these ages now. Most people by 70, they are on the way out. And in these 60, 70, 80 years, anything that you do in your life, buildings that you build, houses that you construct, jobs that you have, cars that you drive, your families, your kids, your spouses, everything. All of it becomes insignificant on the day of Yom Qiyam, on the day of judgment. <laughs> on that day, everything becomes insignificant. Because on that day, the only thing that matters is the one who had more good than bad, he is successful. The one who has more bad than good, then he is unsuccessful. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says in a hadith, he said that you should really give importance to five things before five things. اغتنم خمسا قبل خمسا To prioritize five things in your life before five other things. And he said the first one is your health before you become sick. That you should give importance to your health before you become sick. And these things are from those affairs of this life that someone who's not a victim, he doesn't appreciate the value of something. As the Arabs, they say, health is a crown and it sits on the head of the healthy one. And no one sees it except for the ill. Only the one who is sick, does he appreciate health. And the second thing he said was, your youth before you become old. Give importance to your youth before you become old. And again, only someone who's old, only someone who has to sit with support, has to walk with help, only he will explain to you the value of youth, the value of being young. And likewise, your time before you become occupied, before you become busy. Free time. Prioritize your free time before you become busy. Because free time is a ni'mah from the blessings of Allah. Free time is a moment of life that you have been given as a gift. You have no occupation, you have nothing to do in that time. So utilize that time. Because the day of judgment is such a day that people will be running to each other for single deeds. A mother will go to her son, a son will go to his father for a single deed and he will not get it. Even your parents will not give you anything. So one single deed takes what? It takes a few seconds. So your free time is really something that we should give value to. The other thing that the Messenger of Allah said is that he said that you should give importance, prioritize your life before you die. Only someone who's passed away, only he can tell you the value that this life has. We just can't speak with them. They can't communicate that to us. That's why Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that if the deceased, if the graves were ripped open and the dead were asked, seek one thing of this world. Ask for one thing of this world. They would say that we want one day from Allah. Because for them, the most valuable time of the year is Ramadan. The best days are the days of Ramadan. And they want just a few hours from one of these days. They don't want to go back and make amends with this person, or go back and have this job, or go back and make this much money, or go back and do this for their family. All they want to do is they want to go back, and they want a few hours, just some time, so they can do something for themselves. So this is the value of time, brothers. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, He said that there are two blessings that the people, they waste. They waste them. Your health and your time. 
the people waste them. And once they leave, once they lose these two things, then they are just in a state of regret, in a state of loss. So it's important that we make value of our time. It's important that we try to implement the good that we have in our minds, our intentions, and we give life to our intentions. Not just say we'll do it one day. You know, make it day one. Don't say one day. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala and he said, he said, Al-yawma amalun wala hisab. He said, today you have actions but no accountability. So you can do what you want. No one's going to ask you. No one's going to take you into account today. Wa ghadan, tomorrow, hisab wala amal. There is only accountability. There's no more action anymore. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين. الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدى السبيل. وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين هذا صلوا وسلموا رحمكم الله على خير البرية وأشرف البشرية وعلى آله وصحبه كما أمركم الله به إذ قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الأربع أبي بكر وعمر وثمان وعلي وعن سائر صحابته أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك لذة النظر إلى وجهك الكريم والشوق إلى لقائك في غير ضراء مضرة ولا فتنة مضلة اللهم بارك لنا في القرآن والسنة وانفعنا بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون